welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us for our first art party of 2023. Um, before we get started, I just wanted to welcome you and introduce us. My name is Gabe, this is Kiden. Um, and before we get started, I just want to let you know this is being recorded so that you guys have access to it at any time that you need it. Um, after we do this, you can access it and go back to it. Um, also, please know if you need a break, please feel free to take one. And if you need anything at all, I will be your chat master. So if you have any questions, if you feel like you're falling behind, you missed something, you're confused, your dog ate your homework, you let me know. I've got your back. I'll be in the chat right over there. Um, and yeah, let's go and get this started with Karen. Yay. Thank you so much, Gabe. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Sensory Poetry. Like Gabe said, today is our first art party of the year, and I'm so excited to be here with you all. Before we jump into a workshop, or I guess as we're beginning, you signed up for a workshop called Sensory Poetry. And when we think of senses, we think of what we can see, what we can smell, taste, hear, touch, sometimes even feel in our emotions, right? Our senses are a way for us to get to know more about the world around us. And then some, and it communicates with the world inside of us. So I'm curious if you feel comfortable sharing, would you share with us all something that you see, hear, smell, taste, or can touch around you wherever you are? If you feel comfortable either unmuting yourself and sharing or just throwing it into the chat. Go ahead, I see a hand raised. Are you able to mute yourself? Hi. Hi, Karen, how are Hi. you? Hi, hello. Yeah, well, I am here at uh, my daughter Maya's apartment and she has a little water fountain for her cats and I can hear the water bubbling. It's very soothing. <laughs> it's a nice sound. Nice sound. <laughs> awesome. So the sound of, of mm -hmm. hearing, and I see you're even now, now attaching like ways to describe the sound, right? So calming and soothing. Cool. Thank you so much for sharing and welcome. In the chat, I see someone sees their cat named Dill. Dan, Dan sees his cat. Awesome. Jess also sees her cat. Carrie, you can hear running water. Yeah, go ahead and just shout it out. You can eat oranges and can, feel pencil. Yeah, so that's two senses, right? You can you can eat an orange and experience experience the taste, and you can also feel a pencil. How would you describe the taste of an orange? Um, it's juicy. Mm -hmm. It's tangy. Mm -hmm. Awesome. So <laughs> juicy and tangy. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you so much for sharing. Anybody else want to share? There. Um, you want to be to you? Tasting gummy candies. Gummy candies, you said? Mm -hmm. A little hard. I see. How would you describe, I see you're holding it in your hand. How would you describe the um, yeah. way that it feels? Oh, it's squishy. Squishy. Cool. Squishy. Awesome. And it's delicious. Awesome. Very tasty. And then Doreen, I see you have a hand up. Can you share with us? No, I did. Can you say that one more time? My name is Olivia. Uh huh. Olivia. Nice to meet you, Olivia. Um, I have. I, I have a scented book. It smells like marshmallow. Oh my goodness. Is that a bookmark? A scented bookmark and it smells like marshmallows. Oh my goodness. Go ahead. Who is the person next to you? I think they want to share too. My name is Speak louder. My name is and I can hear my dishwasher. You can hear your dishwasher? Awesome. So we have Olivia and Sophia. Thank you so much for sharing and welcome. We have a scented bookmark. I want one of those. And a dishwasher. I also want one of those. Oh my goodness. Thank you both for sharing. 
really quickly yeah. also, so we just talked about senses. The second part is like poetry, right? What does poetry mean to you? When I say the word poetry, what do you think of? Yeah, feel free to shout it out or just or throw it into the chat. Thinking through images. Can you say that one more time? Thinking through images. Thinking through images. Cool. Something that I think about when I think about poetry are words. That's one thing I think about poetry. Go ahead, Becca. Oh, it's already unmuted. Oh, it's already unmuted. Sorry. Okay. I think of it as words and mm -hmm. rhyming. Hmm. Yeah. So words, and then sometimes they can rhyme, right? I also think of music and songs and song lyrics. Cool. Yeah, I actually write. You said you write. Do you write music? Uh, no, I write little stories. You write stories. Wow, fantastic. I'm so excited to see how your storytelling will come through in this poetry workshop. That'll be really fun. And then, uh, my, my, my stories are ready, wrong. I'm still writing mine. It's going to be a chapter book, so. Wow, so you're... I probably can't read it to you. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> It'll take okay. the whole session. That's okay. I guess I see, like, so you're focused on storytelling and writing a chapter book, right? And maybe making right. poetry today will just be another part of you kind of like yeah. continuing yeah. to like explore what your art making looks like, right? And what you want that to be. Thank you so much for being here. Yeah. It looks like Olivia, you think of art and you think of songs. Very cool. Awesome. I would like to share with you all a form of poetry, or not a form, but a, a genre. You know how in music we have genres. There's country music, there's pop, there's R&B, there's soul, there, right? There's so many different um, genres of music and think about them like families. In poetry there are also genres of poetry or f families of, of poetry and uh, one of those, the ones that I would like to share with you today is called concrete poetry. Has anybody ever heard of concrete poetry? No? Just hearing that name, what do you think it might be? Just by that word, concrete poetry. What's your guess? Go ahead, Sophia. I see your hand raised. Um, I think uh, like like old poetry. Hmm. Maybe it's old, older poetry. Yeah. Nice guess. Thanks for sharing. Anybody else? Yes. Yeah, I would say forms the basis, the foundation, a concrete foundation. Hmm. Yeah. So you're thinking about maybe the word something that you build on, maybe. Hmm. Okay. Foundation. Something to be built on. I see in the chat, Dan, is it solid, strong? Can you stand on it? Hmm, similar to kind of what, uh, what was just said about like foundation and something to build on, which also I feel like is connected to what Sophia just said, which is like if it's older, right, there's like a history there, um, time and experience, cool. Any other guesses or inferences would be our, our big word for a guess? Sweet. We're going to jump in. I have a little slideshow handy for us to start to go through. We'll get to see some concrete poets. Can everybody see this slide okay? Cool. So these first two poems are by an American poet named uh, Mary Ellen Salt. On the left side, you'll see this poem called, it's entitled Lilac. And what you can notice about both of these poems is that they're both exploring types of flowers. They were made in the 1960s. Um, and the way that Mary Ellen Soltz's work has been described is like a collection of words and shapes, where she's looking at word as verbal. So we think about that as like word as the sounds that I'm I'm making to communicate with you and movement right because to communicate the sound movement is happening in my throat in my lungs in my mouth and she's also looking at the visual aspects of words and writing um, 
the way that the words and the letters are coming together on the page to create a visual picture as much as the sound, right? So my question for you is, how would you read this? Is someone brave and bold and willing to try and read one of these for us? The bottom one looks like dogwood. Mm -hmm. I don't want to pronounce the other one. <laughs> oh, that's okay, Rosie. So it seems like the, the uh, dogwood is a bit easier to kind of like discern or to see what the word is. And the other one is maybe a little bit more difficult to kind of um, decipher, I would say. Thank you for trying. I'm going to say that there's no wrong answer. I think there's no one way to like read these poems. And I think that's really cool. I saw another hand. Becca, would you like to try and read one of these poems? How would you read this poem? Lilac. Lilac. Left 1963. Mm, awesome. Yeah. So we can At least I think that's how it's written. Yeah. Thank you so much for reading it. We can see that there are letters being repeated, right? In these circles that are creating the shape of a lilac. Has anybody ever seen a lilac in real life or seen a picture of a lilac? Yeah, they're like clusters of little flowers, right? When I was little, there, were a, a, there was a lilac bush that grew out this bank that was on my way to my elementary school. And I always knew, I could smell it before, that I, before I saw it. So lilacs are also very fragrant. And the poet here is using the letters to paint the picture, to create the image of the flowers. Awesome, so this is just one exam example of a concrete poem. These next two poems are by Giovanna Sandri. She's an Italian poet, and she took inspiration from advertisements um, and the text on those advertisements. She also often entitled her poems Constellazione, which is constellation, where she made a connection between poetry and stargazing, like looking up at the sky. Um, one way that folks have described her work is that she allowed the text to become a riddle or a puzzle for the reader or viewer. What's one word that you would use to describe these poems here? Oh, I see a hand raise. You can go ahead. Um, can you repeat that? Yeah, sure. Thank you for asking. Looking at, do you see the picture of these poems here? How would you describe them? What do they look like to you? They look like, like many lines and dots. Mm, many lines and dots. Yeah. And it looks like um back um I saw like circles mm -hmm. and. I liked how she used her imagination. Hmm. Yeah, what makes you feel like she used her imagination? Because she didn't do like, like words. She mm. used words, but mm. she used like her own technique. Hmm. She made it her own, so she made the words her own. Very cool. Thank you for sharing. You made me think of, um, yeah, one of the ways that they describe her work is like creating a puzzle, right? And like, a puzzle, when someone gives me a puzzle, like it's up to me to kind of solve and figure it out, right? I might not get it the exact way that the poet wants me to get it, but that's part of the, the fun of exploring. Awesome. Rosie, I see your hand up. Um, a word I would use is maybe like peace, because mm -hmm. just the way it flows seems so peaceful and the arrangement of the dots. And I looked mm -hmm. closely at the, I guess you could say, thicker lines at the larger one mm -hmm. at the top and mm -hmm. like the bottom, it almost looks like they're parentheses or something. Mm -hmm. It's very cool. Yeah. It looks like she's, she's also used um, punctuation, other forms of like text, not just the letters. Mm -hmm. When you said the word peace, you also made, I know it sounds like you meant the word peaceful, like calm, serene. But uh, yes. you also made me think of the word peace, like to take a peace. And 
thinking about stars and like if you were to take a piece of the sky, right, and put it on paper using parentheses and periods and many lines and dots, maybe it would look like this. I see in the chat, um, Nayeli said stars, maybe the universe. And then Jesse said, it looks like how jazz music sounds to me. Ooh, that's a cool idea. Thinking about the way we might translate what, what we're taking in by one sense into another. Um, earlier when someone said uh, the taste of an orange, right, it being juicy, how, would we, how could we take that taste of a, the juicy orange and turn it into a sound? Like what would that song be to describe the juicy orange? That's just me getting a little bit, getting excited about like all of the opportunities um, that there are to make art from an orange, from a pencil, from the night sky. Awesome. Okay, I'm going to move on to the next, next example. Uh, this is a work entitled Wildflowers by Katalin Ladic. She was a Serbian poet. She's a performance artist and she is an actress. Um, in this piece, you can see in the background, there's almost a pixelated like flower pot. And she's taken um, the letters and isolated them to become the flowers themselves. The fun part, I think, one of the fun parts about this poem, I think, is that it spells out nothing. There are no words in this poem. I'm curious about your reactions to this. It's a poem with no words. To me, it almost looks like, I mean, I can tell that there's letters, but some of them almost look like just symbols. Mm. And when I first saw it, I thought like when you first changed the slide, I saw I thought it was a map, but then I saw mm. a peacock. Very interesting. If you look in the middle down below, I can mm -hmm. see like a rounded kind of circular line. And uh, I don't know, it just looks like, I don't know. Mm -hmm. It's different, but I really like it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it sounds like there was a moment of like curiosity and discovery. And you're like, it seems like they're letters, but they also kind of look like symbols. And then it seems like that opened up into a peacock and made me think of like the feathers and the way that the, gr the background is kind of grainy where that also makes me think of like texture and like the texture that's being created on the page, the way that feathers move. Yeah, really cool. Go ahead. I think is that Sophia, are you raising your hand? Go ahead. Um, it looks to me like a flower pot mm -hmm. that is like growing into a tree. Mm -hmm. And I like how she like uses like sketch and she left some white space to make that like shade hmm. and yeah I agree it kind of looks like symbols and numbers hmm. symbols and numbers and you're also seems like you're bringing to our attention like the value of um, yeah. of the gray and the white and like where there are lighter spots and then where there are darker spots what do you think that does that there are lighter spots and darker spots It makes like that shadow and that like texture mm -hmm. and like the balance. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it feels like a full image, right? And our focus is maybe drawn at first to the middle where the flower pot is and these wild flowers. And then we also kind of then kind of go out. Yeah, it's like blooming like it's trying to bloom like a tree. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right, you said it seems like it's about to grow into a tree. So it also seems like there's a moment of um, of a movement, you know, like between the difference between like a photograph and a video, where like a photograph is a just like one moment captured. Um, something about this image is like making you think about what comes next, you know, or like what right before this, which is, I think is really cool. Not something that we often think about. We're thinking about a poem, but that 
when we are reading a poem that's active and when we are writing a poem that is active, there is something happening. Things are being made and choices are being made in that process. Anything else about this poem? Okay, I'm going to move to our next poet. So this is a poem entitled Hojas Rojas Secas. Um, which translates to dried red leaves. It is by a poet named Ana Maria Uribe, and she's an Argentinian poet. Um, and she began making poems online uh, in 1997, and she coined the term Ani poem, um, which makes you think of the word animated. It's almost like an animated poem, but Ani poem is the term that she coined. Um, what do you, this is a still, so the way that I just kind of talked about the difference between a photo and a video. Um, this piece is originally in the form of um, like a GIF we could think of. This is, what we have on the screen is just like a snapshot of it. What do you notice about this poem? There's quite a bit of repetition. Yeah, what do you see repeating? The letter S. Hmm. Or maybe, you know, to them that letter means something special and they wanted it to symbolize something else. Hmm. And the yellow ones that are pretty bright almost look like stars to me. Hmm. Thank you for sharing. I saw Becca's hand next. I noticed in all the words, there's A in it. Hmm. So there's like a consistency. Yeah, so if I said that out loud, right? Hojas, rojas, secas. Yep. There are M and. Oh, go ahead. Yep, and even in, in late, early, and Anna, Maria, well, besides the rain, but even in Hojas and Rojas, if mm -hmm. I said that right. Rojas, yeah. I'm not really good with languages. That's okay. <laughs> Thank you for reading. And you, you identified where those A's are in the words, even in the artist's names, it seems. Um, the Hojas, Rojas, Secas, I believe we would call that like an internal end rhyme where the ends of the words rhyme inside the line um, and we can think about that hojas roja, rojas secas those first three words that would be one line the next line would be the s rojas secas and then that's how the lines would be se separated in this piece like lines on a page olivia and sophia i saw your hands raised what do you want to share i like how like the s is like fall down mm -hmm. like it's going like up and then it turns into like um like brighter colors first it's like a darker color and then it goes to like a light color in the middle yeah why do you think those colors because it, it feels like it looks like a sunset like a sunset mm -hmm. Hmm. yeah yeah those are the colors of a sunset right and I agree, um, all of those words um, rhyme in Spanish. Yeah, they do. Hojas, rojas, secas. Do you know what those words mean? Hojas, rojas, secas? No. That's okay. It goes, we'll break it down. So, hojas, leaves, rojas, red. We see some red in this poem, right? Secas, yeah. dried. What do leaves do when they dry? They, um, they kind of die. They die, right? And the, the tree lets them go. The tree stops yeah. giving them nutrients and they... Fall. They fall. Yeah. I think the sunset is a really cool interpretation layered with that too because it makes me think about like, yeah, when leaves are falling, what's happening around them? Or like what time of day? It's really cool. Awesome. Okay, I'm going to move to the next example, right? We have another example also by um, Ana Maria Uribe. Uh, this is titled Primavera, which means spring. 
and you can see there's an animation that goes along. So this poem consists entirely of P's and Q's. It looks like a vine that's being climbed or grown or something. It's cool. Hmm. Maybe a vine. Yeah, a vine growing. Hmm. Go ahead, Olivia. Um, the, the, vine, the Q's and P's kind of look like if you drew a tree hmm. and, the, and the circles are the leaves. Hmm. Yeah, so we have a vine and we have a tree with leaves. Go ahead, Sophia. It kind of looks like me it's bamboo. Ooh. It kind of looks to me. Because hmm. it's going like upside, upside. Hmm. So it kind of looks like bamboo to me. Yeah, bamboos. What? Bamboos are not, are they, they're not stalks, right? What are, what are bamboos called? Like, um, shoots. shoots. Shoots, there you go. Thank you. I, I was like, you were being like a teacher, like waiting for us. No, no, I seriously was like, what are they called? <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome, wow. So there's almost like a theme too, right? Between the last poem and the next poem about nature and growth and movement, a tree. Um, it also looks like pussy willows. Yeah, because they have those little, the like little nubs, the little white nubs on the branches, right? I think that's a tree. Um, my first question that I asked about the first poet and the first artwork that we saw was how do you read this, right? And so I'm, I'm like curious and like want to ask that again. But then the other part of me is like, is that even the right question for these kinds of poems? Do you think they're meant to be read? Like, what do you think about that idea that there are poems that have no words in them? Go ahead, Rosie. So I like that the poems with no words, like I never put two together that I mean, I know you can do art in anything, and writing is art, but that you could, like, draw a poem. And with this one, it, I, my question is, why didn't they do it from the top, going from the top to the bottom? Why did they do the animation from the bottom going to the top? Mm -hmm. Like, obviously, that means something, or I don't know, they're trying to tell something with it. Hmm. Yeah, it sounds like you're curious, like if you, could, if you could ask this poet a question, you might ask her about her choices in the process. Like maybe, yeah. Hmm. yeah. Yeah, Rosie, when you said like, I hadn't thought about a poem, like the idea that a poem could be drawn or could be a picture. Yeah. Um, I think that that's that kind of like, oh, wow, is for me one of the most important parts of concrete poetry. It's kind of like pushing um, the limits of like what poetry can be and what it has been. It's very much like the science of poetry, I would say, like crafting experiments. Like there are, um, I'm thinking, I can't think of their names right now. There are two poets, a male poet and a female poet, who each on their own created lists of a hundred, either a hundred or more than a hundred poetry experiments. Um, for example, one of them is like a, a translation experiment where you write a poem, put it through a, an online translator into another language, and then translate it back into the first language, and then you, you notice what has changed. Um, so, con and that's an, an example of like, of concrete poetry, thinking about like, not just the words that I'm writing and like the meaning of it, but like the way that I'm writing it, the process, the choices, what does it look like? What does it sound like? What does it feel like, that texture? Um, what was the artwork that you all were most drawn to? If you feel comfortable saying out loud or throwing it in the chat. And if you don't remember the name, that's okay if you wanna describe it. 
Go ahead, Sophia. I described it as like, I describe it as like um, trees growing. Trees growing. Hmm. And like the, the leaves are growing mm-hmm. to a beautiful tree. Hmm. The leaves are growing into a beautiful tree. Awesome. Thank you. Go ahead, Becca. I think of it as a pea going on top of a pea and a pea on the other side on top of it and then again. Mm-hmm. Like pea, no, like pea goes here and mm-hmm. pea goes there and pea goes here and mm-hmm. pea goes there. Yeah. As you were doing that motion with your hand, you made me think of like, um, of like architecture. There's a poet who, of course, whose name I'm blanking on again, who makes poems that look like buildings. And then she's thinking about like, that poems are spaces that people meet. And so it also sounds like if you were to give, earlier someone said that they thought it was a map, one of the poems. If you were to give a direction of how to recreate this poem, you'd say P goes here and the P goes on top and the P goes on top, which I feel like is an awesome idea for another poem, right? Like, if you were to write a poem that tells someone else how to write a poem, that'd be a cool experiment. Anybody else favorite poems that we've seen so far? Okie doke. Let's jump into some making. I'm gonna close this out. So, does everybody have their material kit, their Snow City materials? Yeah, thank you for showing me. Thank you, yeah, we got some Ziploc bags, some food coloring. We got our like charms. Sweet. So, if you'll please take your giant Ziploc bag, you'll notice mine already has water. On the side of your Ziploc bag, there should be like a line, a little like tick mark. I would like you to please take a moment now and fill your gallon size bag, not all the way, just to that tick mark, okay? Just to the, the mark with, with water. I don't see a mark on mine, so how far up should we go? Uh, I would say one, two, three, four, five. Hmm. All right. Like I, an inch or less? See, <laughs> when I was in elementary school, I struggled the most with the ruler. Um, I'm going to say a little bit more than an inch, probably. Okay. And then we can try it, and we'll see, because it's going to be laid flat. Yeah. Oh, Thank okay. You. I'll be right back. Okay, awesome. We'll just take some time now, and we can do that. Nice. Thank you for showing me, Becca. I'm so excited. So if you've already gotten your water... We won't go to the next step yet, but if you've already gotten your water, you can go ahead and take out the, um, the Simply Thick packet. It's like a little white and yellow packet. We'll just take that out now because that goes next. Should I do like a beauty influencer when they go like this? Yes. <laughs> Yeah, Jess, the colors are so fun. Maitha, it's so good to see you. It's so good to see you too. <laughs> no. I'm so excited. Nice. So once you have your water, yeah, booyah, Dan. Once you have your water, 
Go ahead and open your thickening packet. There should be, there's a tear here line. If you have someone else with you, it might be helpful to have someone hold the bag and then someone else pour out the thickening packet. But if not, just take your time. Do we pour in the whole packet? Yes, you're going to pour the whole packet in there. That's a good question. And then, once you've put in the thickening packet, I would say, let's go ahead, since our bag is still already open, we'll pour in our like beads and charms, okay? So we put both bags of stuff in? Yes, you're gonna put in the, yeah, the beads and the charms and the letters. Everything okay. in those little, little bags. So, um, my, my water covering thing, uh -huh. it doesn't seem to be thickening. Oh, you know what? Did you put your beads and stuff in there already? No, not yet. Okay. What we'll do is we'll put in the beads and everything first, then we'll seal the bag, and then we will massage it, and it'll activate the thickening, okay? But if it doesn't, just let me know. I also got some dye on my hands. Oops. Oh, some of the food coloring? Yeah, I got some blue too. Look, oh, I think it's turning green. Wait, I'm sorry, another question. Am I supposed to put like this bag into the blue bag? Uh, no, it seems like maybe you have two different bags there. I'd say just pick one of the big bags because your other bag is blue, right? Yeah. Yeah, I'd blue say just orange. since you're already putting like the beads in that blue bag, I say just stick with the blue bag. Yeah. Okay, thanks for asking. Anybody else have any questions? Okay, so once you're the Simply Thick and your charms and your letter beads are all in there, I'm like pushing the air out gently. And then I'm sealing the top. Oh, go ahead. Is that Sophia? Yeah, um, is it fine if there's just like a little air? Yeah, that's totally okay. And you know what, that might be even a little bit helpful if there's a little bit of air. But we can try it out first if you lay it flat, and we'll see. And then if it has too much air, then you can push some out. That's a good question, okay. though. So with my bag laid flat, I'm just going to start to move the water and the beads around. And this should change the consistency of the water to make it more thick, because it's going to blend that packet in. I might have a little bit too much air, so I'm going to open my bag just a little bit and push some out. Carrie, it does look like I'm underwater. 
I love it. I've always wanted to go to one of those restaurants where you can, um, you know, the fish are like all around you, but I think I'd be a little bit nervous. But I'd love to be there for a little while. Maybe just an appetizer. I don't know if anyone else noticed, but the uh, like white beads that are square uh -huh. with the words on them have different words on either side. Ooh. So if we flip them, so. I didn't find that out. We have sunshine, and then if I flip it, we also have together. Cool. So. I want to share with you, I was doing like a bit more research into, I, I'm really interested in like the etymology of words, like the history of words, where they came from, and like the root words, so what, like, what's the root meaning of the word? And I started to do some digging on the word poetry, and it comes from the Greek word, um, oh my gosh, I listened to the example of how to pronounce this, it's a Greek word, I want to say it's poien, P-O-I-E-I-N, poien which means to make, which made me think that a poem is something that is made, or we would also say crafted in English, but it's something that is being made and that is, it is made and then also is being made. So it's made and it's also in the process of being made, which made me think about how like as poets, I've heard so often the phrase that your poem is never done. It's never really done. You can tell I'm already like just starting to like explore with the bag that's in front of me. And I just want to invite you to do the same in a way that like feels comfortable. I and... love the glitter. Oh, what'd you say, Becca? I love the glitter. You love the glitter. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I love the glitter too. Truly, all these beads made me so excited. I was like, we just need to order all of these because we need them. I'm so happy that you like the glitter. Yeah, just can go ahead, Olivia and Sophia. What happens if you have too much water? Uh, like if you have if you have too much or if you don't have enough. I have, I add too much water. I see. Yeah. If have you tried laying it down flat? Yeah, I tried to massage it, mm -hmm. and um, my sisters worked out great. Yeah. Because. Like I see. It's not mm -hmm. But I think I put in too much water. I see. No worries. Can I offer you an idea? Yeah. Are you nearby, like a sink? Yeah. Okay. Are you able to pour some out on your own, or maybe your sister can help you if that's okay? Yeah. I My mom just, is doing it. Oh, awesome. Yeah. I say just ask for a little bit of help and see if you can pour some out. Um, if some of your charms fall out. That's okay, we can put them back in. But yeah, I'd say just try and get rid of some of that water, okay? Cool. Yeah, so I'm exploring right now with my hands, but I also, what just happened was like, I got an air bubble and I also like, can hear the bag crumpling up. Yeah, I accidentally got an air bubble. Bubble too. You got an air bubble too? What did it sound like? Mm. It doesn't really sound like anything, actually. Hmm. Sadly. I see. It's not too strong of a sound, not too loud. I got an air bubble. It didn't sound like anything, but it felt like something in my hands. It just, I can't describe it. Hmm. Agreed. That's interesting. Was it a new feeling, Rosie? Yes, it was. Hmm. So I shared with you, I'm just having fun with the whole sensory experience. That's awesome. Continue having fun with the sensory experience. Earlier I shared about the word poyen, right, which means to make, are two other words that start with P along with poetry. I guess they all start with P. Um, our process and play. Those are our guiding words today. Go ahead, Sophia and Olivia. I think um, 
like it looks like a pool and mm. I agree your adventure never ends hmm yeah like the poet it never ends it never ends hmm. you said the adventure never ends is that what you said yeah hmm. I have the word play you have the word play in your bag yeah and I just need to look for it I uh, I thought of the play, but I'll tell you when I find it. Okay, sounds good. You know what? I think it might be time for us to start to make our own poems and kind of explore. Remember that our words are process and play. Um, no one has to see your poem if you don't want them to. You can make a hundred poems right now and it could just be for you. Or you could make one and take your time. It's really just up to you. I would like to do a little, I don't want to call this a practice, we'll call this a study. Poets and artists will usually, will often make, do what are called studies where we're like investigate. Um, we might draw the same thing over and over again from different perspectives. I might write a new poem in the same place on different days to kind of explore what changes for that poem. So we'll call these studies. I would like to invite you to shake up your bag. Shake it up, shake it up. And just think about like, what do you notice about the bag? I notice that it's a little bit cold to touch. I can kind of hear the water moving but it's almost tickling my ears because it sounds like gooey, gooey water. Nice. Cool, so once you've kind of shaken up your bag, go ahead and look at it and see what you notice when you look at your bag. I notice that there reminds me kind of like a lava lamp the way that there are like globs that stick together and like air bubbles. I'm like really interested in putting it really close to my ear. I'm like, what do I hear? Oh, did not like the plastic sound. Okay, <laughs> nice. Once you've shaken up your bag, Go ahead and lay it down flat again. That sounds both crinkly and gooey. Mm-hmm. Crunchy, but also slimy. Okay, and I wanna invite you to find a letter, any letter, and drag it out into a space of your choice. It doesn't have to be the middle. I think I'm going to pick right here. So I pick the letter R. And next I'm going to pick, I'm going to find a charm and I'm going to drag the charm out next to this letter. Not thinking too much about why yet. I'm just gonna start to build around this R. And now I'm gonna start to think of a word that starts with R, because my letters are. So whatever letter you chose, start to think of a word. And it's okay if you start to take peeks at like, what letters do I have? Because I just did that and then I thought of the word rice. So now I'm gonna pull, because I saw an I and I saw a C. So now I'm gonna pull out the I. And the C. Oh, also, I want to check back in. Sophia, is everything okay with your bag now? 
It's still a little watery, but um, I can handle it now. Okay. Okay. Sounds good. I'm glad that it's a little bit better now. Okay. Cool. So my word is rice. Beans. That'd be a good word too. All right, once you have a word, if you feel comfortable and excited and would love to share your word, would you pop it in the chat, please? My word is parte. Very fitting for this art party. My word is wag. Yeah, it's zesty. My word is laugh, but with an F. Hmm. Laugh like L-A-F? Yeah. I love it. I love L-U-V it. <laughs> that made me L-A-F. <laughs> My word is E-R from Olivia. Hmm. E-R, okay, I know that there are prefixes. Is E-R a suffix? Suffix goes at the end of the word, modifies the ends of the word. Hmm. Cool. So next step, we're going to kind of, we're going to do another study. Um, we're going to pull out another letter, okay? Gonna, what? Money! <laughs> yes! <laughs> My word is... is and. Hmm. Awesome. Ooh, such a variety of words that we found here. Okay, so next step, pick another letter and drag it out into another space in your bag. I'm going to go with a challenge, and I'm going to pick the letter W. For Wombo. For Wombo. No. For Wyoming. And, yeah, continue to explore your bag. What other letters do you have? What other words do you have that might connect or that you can build onto the letter that you just pulled. I see that I have the word full. I mean, letters. Did you say you're running out of letters? Well, not exactly. I Just say. the easiest one I could find was sit. Mm, yeah, sometimes it's a challenge, right? Can I show you an example? So I, in my heart, I really want to make the word wonderful. Because I saw full and I saw a W and I said, I want to make wonderful. But I don't think I have the letter N. So what I'm doing is I'm using a little heart. I'm still on my journey to find a D and an E and an R, but for now I have a heart. And I see Wayne, ah, Wayne and Rosie. So my new word is boa, but instead of an A, instead of a B, I used an eight. Ooh. And the eight makes me think of like a boa, like a snake. And I see Wayne, you used a five for your S in list. Hmm. Go ahead, Sophia. Um, I have all and an eight. All and an eight. 
the number eight? Um, no, like I ate. Like I ate, A-T-E, A -T -E, all and eight. Hmm. I only have A-T. Yeah, at. Olivia has at? I have at. You have at, I see. Okay. Thank you for sharing. I see grow and deny. I'm gonna keep looking for my D. One. I might just have to use a pound. I also made we. <laughs> Awesome. For those of you who have already made words and you're like, it's getting kind of hard with the letters, I want to invite you to like look at the charms and look at the water that's in your space, uh, in your bag. Could you, the way that our, the concrete poets that we saw use the background to create an image, could you do the same? What would that look like? Can I make shapes? by like pulling or scraping or pushing, using my knuckles or sliding across. Oh, found an R. My friends, we're getting close to time. But I want to say that you get to keep this bag and you get to keep these beads. And I hope that the bag doesn't leak, but in the case that it does, you now have like an idea for a way to create a poem that doesn't even need a pencil and a paper. And they don't have to be full finished poems, right? We talked about like that a poem might not ever be done. But now I have put together two words that I might otherwise, I might not have otherwise. I have the words rice and I have wonderful. And so just the artist in me is like, how can I make those two words fit? Or, or rather like, how do they already fit? Not, not necessarily even having to force it, but like what is a poem that has the word rice in it look like or sound like that also has the word wonderful? or a song or a painting. And so I also, I see this like both as a poem, even if I were just like rice, wonderful, and I took a picture of this or left it as is, it would be a concrete poem, right? Because it's calling into our focus, not just the words, but the shapes around it and the texture. So it's both is a poem and it is a way to make more poems. I wanna thank each and every one of you for like being here today and for spending time making art exploring what is poetry and looking at different ways that we can use words and numbers and symbols and um, parentheses and dots and many lines to create trees and create vines and create leaves and create seasons and times and textures and sounds and sights and smells and tastes and all these things.
just by using what we already have. Food coloring, water, beads, letters on a screen. Yeah, I'm just so thankful and I feel very grateful to have been able to spend time with each of you, to have you here and to make art with you. And all of these fantastic, wonderful words that came out of this process. Um, yeah, keep making art, poets. And we hope to see you at our future art parties that maybe Gabe will share a little bit more about. Awesome. Thank you, everyone. You did an amazing job. I love the wonderful goops that you have created. Um, so three really quick things. So number one, we want to see the goop. Show us your goop. Take some photos of it. Um, Jess is going to attach some links. Um, and sorry if I call it goops. These are wonderful oh. poems. <laughs> I really love the very goop. beautiful goop. And I want to see photos of it. Uh, Jess is attaching a link. Please uh, show us what you made. We'd love to see it. Feel free to move them around, do multiple photos of it. We'd love to see anything you have. You can even make an animation of it that way. Um, yeah. And then the next thing we want to talk about is uh, tell us what you, how you felt about this. Give us your feedback. We, uh, we have a little link for that as well. Tell uh, Karen how amazing she was and how awful I was in the chat. Um, we'd love to hear from you. And then lastly, uh, like Karen already talked about, we have another one coming up. And let me see what date it is on. It is on, I can read. April 25th with the music master himself, Kevin. We are going to be making music virtually, which is really weird. It's super funky and we want you there. So if you want to make funky beats and music and do some weird stuff, we can do it. We promise. We're figuring it out and it's going to be really cool. And Kevin's really cool. Almost as cool as Kevin, but we'll see how it is. But thank you so much for joining us. Y'all are amazing. We had fun with you. Thank you for having a relaxing evening, sharing this time together to make art, to write together, to learn. Um, and yeah, we love you guys. Thanks for joining us. Bye. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thanks, Rosie. Bye, bye, guys. for days. That was so beautiful and fun. Oh.